Good afternoon. I uh, knocked out 14. Uh, it's 2.05. Just getting home. They were spread out through the county, so yeah, it took me a little longer than I thought. Uh, I had a few more I could have put in there, but it made more sense for those to go on with tomorrow's route because all I have with me today is the little 60 inch mower. And the other few lawns that I had were too big for me to go on the 60, um, the 72s are a lot quicker for those yards. Uh, what I wanted to put on in my video today was, uh, you know, it's in the 90s, you know, it's it's been pretty hot here. I'm in the shade here at my house. I, I, do, I make my place intentionally shady. Most of the yards I had today were out in, you know, direct sun. But even so, uh, I had only this much water with me and I got that much left and the, the, I don't, how that's possible is for a couple of reasons I'll try to make it short one is a glass bottle so it doesn't have plastic that has uh, hormone disruptors in it and hormone disruptors act as phytoestrogens which they act like a estrogen hormone. The problem with estrogen hormones is it causes you to retain water and put on fat. And the higher estrogen levels you have, the, the more it knocks down your testosterone levels. So, so that's one thing. I drink out of glass bottles uh, so that the hormone disruptors aren't causing water retention. Um, therefore, I have less daily water requirements and i noticed years ago that the migrant workers that I worked alongside of didn't ever drink that much water and i was curious as to why and i think now i understand and then the next part of it is the diet um i'm only using free range eggs um which would have more of the omega-3 so i'll address the omega-3 omega-6 ratio first if you have too much omega-6 then you're going to be in a constant state of inflammation when your body's in a constant state of inflammation, it's going to feel 15 to 20 degrees hotter than it is. So if it's 90 today, it's going to feel like 120 for you. Okay, so you're going to be trying to bring your body back into stay, uh, you know, the uh, cooling it. You'll be using your gut as a, a thermal cooler, um, which makes you drink more water and, and things like that. You got to keep your omega-3s up, which means... Uh, free range eggs um the opposite of red meat you want uh ground bison because the red meat beef is being fed uh uh the grains which uh cause it to be high in omega-6 and low in omega-3 um and maybe like uh wild sardines uh things like that um the smaller fishes, the bigger fishes that have too many mercury and stuff like that. But if you focus on the omega-3, you'll get your omega-6s accidentally. You don't got to focus on that at all. But basically stay away from grain fed, stay away from uh, farm raised, fishing, you know, uh, condensed raised, uh, you know, where they're raising the chickens in captivity and everything. Uh, and then the next thing would be to stay away from GMO because your body um, does not recognize the DNA of genetically modified foods. So obviously stay away from proteins that have been fed GMO too. What happens is your body is kind of like a toilet. Uh, it doesn't have any means of evacuating foreign material any more proficiently than like your toilet. Your toilet gets rid of the material through aqueous transfer using water. Um, so your body can only do the same thing because it doesn't have a bunch of nano robots there that are sitting there re on the ready saying, oh, this guy ate something that's not food, you know, it, and it thinks, yeah, it thinks this stuff's not food because it's GMO, it doesn't recognize the DNA. So it doesn't know how to use that for building blocks and break it down. So it exhausts the body um, because it's trying to parse out anything that it could use in there and uh, and it can't find anything. So 
well, it can find some, but the, the, the exhaustive effort of trying to filter out the bad from the good, it, it's a net loss. So when you're eating the GMO, you're gonna be using a lot of water to try to flush out the toxic. If it's not toxic, it's foreign enough that the body wants to evacuate it. So either way, it's gonna use a lot of water. So those are the primary ways that I don't need as much water on a daily basis. Um, I also use only well water, which I know that's not easy for everybody to do because if you get into um, municipal supplies of water or bottle, you know, uh, commercially packaged bottle of water, you're gonna have chlorine and uh, fluoride and stuff like that in there, which also have their issues as far as phytoestrogens and hormone disruptors and everything else. Um, and then another key factor is, uh, and it may be a little bit off topic, in that I don't spray, I won't ever spray. Um, and I quit even doing the cracks and stuff. I'm looking for a, a natural remedy for that. If somebody knows of it, then let me know. Um, I got to turn around here. I'm showing my little junker car in the background. It's not the best backdrop for a video. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't spray. And the reason being is that, that, uh, the spray as good as it is at killing grass and plants it also kills the the bacteria in your gut and the bacteria in your gut their waste product is vitamins and it's vitamins that you can't find any other sources so when you don't have that good bacteria in your in your intestinal system that's d digesting uh, uh the food and creating the vitamins from their waste that your body then needs then your body's constantly in searching for those vitamins and you're hungry all the time. So, I mean, it sounds kind of crude and everything. And if you use uh, uh, the spray chemicals and stuff, then you can pretty much count on, it. aside from the carcinogenic things that they've found out, you're gonna, you're gonna guarantee yourself that you're gonna be in a constant state of inflammation because uh, your body's gonna be, uh, your, your gut, uh, mucosal layer is gonna be broke down. You're gonna have the bad bacteria in your stomach and, and your uh, intestines. And you're gonna have leaky gut, which is gonna be causing hyper and, uh, inflammation, chronic inflammation all the time, which is gonna drive up your internal temperature and feels like temperature. And uh, then you're gonna have more water requirements. So I, you know, and then it's, I think it was sucralose, one of the sweeteners that's in artificial, or I mean, uh, diet stuff, uh, colas and stuff. It's one atom or something off of the chemical structure of DDT. So, you know, DDT does. They say that one exposure, let alone the people that drink it on a daily basis, can wipe out your uh, good gut bacteria and your gut flora and it will take a year, year and a half to replace, if not more. And then they start talking about in those scenarios how the people get massive inflammation, weight gain, metabolic syndrome, and uh, every disease, diabetes, it all comes about after stuff like that. And they've taken studies where they took a rat that had been exposed to that, therefore not having any good gut bacteria and being massively overweight and the only, and even though they improved its diet, it, it could not recover. Um, so it was no longer exposed to that artificial sweetener. But as soon as they did a, what they call a fecal matter transplant, which if you think about it, that's pretty gross, uh, from a healthy rat, then that rat became skinny. And when they did the uh, opposite and they put the uh, fecal matter from a, a fat rat into the healthy rat, then the, the healthy skinny rat became fat. So um, there's issues like that that are causing problems that people don't even exactly understand yet, but I'm not gonna be using spray and taking a chance on stuff like that. So anyway, that's, that's why I don't use or need as much water through the course of the day as probably a 10th of what I used to use. Um, and it's working for me 
uh, you might want to look into it. There's plenty of health videos on YouTube. All right, y'all have a good day.